Okay, so we've, we've done all our sanding. I've got my batteries fitted. Well, not fitted, but I've checked that it's okay. I've cut my servo holes. So really, I'm all ready to do the finishing. Um, in the past, if you'd have seen the orange pug, uh, certain aspects of that wood, um, I used that from uh, Deluxe Materials, which is uh, laminating, it's called Easy Coat, it's a laminating physis, finishing resin. Because there's quite a lot of bolster on here, I did think about using that. Uh, I did think about using primer, but to be honest with you, I thought to myself, Nick, you're just getting carried away. So all I've done is I have grabbed myself a can of cheap red spray paint. So there we go, there's my best Banksy work. Um, that is just red cheap car paint and I have just added some of the black Sharpie on the ends of the ribs. I am denied about doing red, I don't know, that's just personal choice. Um, so two wings and then I've done the Elevons in black and I've done the fin in black and I think the whole thing I think it added about two or three grams, it was nothing. Um, I experimented with using a primer, but you know, at the end of the day, I thought to myself, mate, it's like a radio control model glider, calm down. So, next thing is, I'm going to be doing is covering in feather light gloss. Now, at the moment, um, it's I've used this once on the Pug V2, um, absolutely brilliant. Now, the advice I would give is it's very tolerant of very high temperatures. It's not massive shrink. So my advice is when you're doing this, although it goes around curves a lot better than standard film, just try and make sure that you've got it down in most of the places. So don't be reliant on it if you've got massive big pockets, which I don't think you will do. Okay, so feather cover gloss. Now, at the moment, there is a slight printing error. So it says shiny side is the adhesive side. If you happen to have that pack and you've got the gloss, that is an error I understand from Angel Wing Designs because that's for the matte surface. So when you've got the matte finish uh, feather cover, which you'll have seen on my Sinbad, um, so it's the shiny side goes down on that. On this, let me see if I can show you or not, but when you look at it, there is a glossy side. There's a gloss side matte side on this particular product it's the matte side faces down and the gloss faces up so a couple of little tips make sure that your bench is free from debris and mess and crap that you might have produced um, also with feather cover it's very good but always make sure that you've got a nice sharp knife um, I have my um, irons, so that's full on, and I've got my irons set to about here, which I've had it so long that I can't actually tell you the... In fact, that goes to four. I'm actually on four and a half. I don't know what that temperature is, but uh, the temperatures for the gloss is exactly the same. So um, I've found, personally, that I've just stuck to one on temperature through both processes but I am going to whack that down to um, three and let's just uh, so make sure that's nice and clean and then we're going to crack on okay so the first thing I am going to do with the matte side up so then we know that that's going to work around now I don't think and I think you'd be foolish to try and get two bits out of that uh, because this if we cut this straight we can use this bit to do our elevons with. Um, so, all I'm going to do is I'm going to be fairly generous, bearing in mind that we've got to go round the uh, structure, so always give yourself a little bit to play with. And I'm not being funny, feather cover is not that expensive. So uh, I'm quite happy to be generous with my cuts. Okay, so the next thing we're going to now do is I'm now going to flip this over 
and we, what we want to try and do is get as much tension out of this or sorry as much tension into this and what I found is I either use a spray adhesive which has worked very well in the past but I've actually got to a stage where I know this material so well I've actually found that just using just a couple of clamps keeps it in place and works quite well. So you see look I'm just pulling on the tension with that there and then I'm just going to very gently put these very small well, there again look, I'm just pulling it, not going mad but see look I've virtually taken the tension out of that just with these three um, pound shop there you go look now that's going to be a cracking start so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tack round I'm going to tack round here so I'm not worried about cutting this off yet I'm going to tack the whole structure all around the edges and then what we'll do is we'll slowly work in with and I say my golden rule as you've seen any of my videos as I always say just keep the iron moving the idea at the moment is that we are just going to you see how I've rolled that over there and just tacking that there see I've just pinched that and all I'm now doing is I'm just not going mad but I've just pinched that and I've put that under a little bit of tension just work my way along here we're just tacking at the moment and I'm just slowly working my way along here you can actually see when you use these colours you can actually see when the adhesive bonds because it changes colour slightly Now I'm not going mad with this at the moment on this tip and I'll show you why in a moment all I'm doing is I'm just going along the edge a little bit of tension see I'm just putting a little bit of tension on not going mad now when I'm happy I've got my basic structure down. So I've got all the. There we go. So I'll just put that down there. I've just got this little bit to do here. Like so. Now. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove the excess. I'm not oh look, it's looking cool already. Um, so I am only gonna go over if I can show you that. I'm gonna go over just the thickness of this uh, handle over there. So I'm gonna just literally hold this light now 
get my knife and I'm just going to slowly work my way along. What I might do is, is actually remove half of it, have another go at tacking it, and then just carry on. But for the time being, I am just going into that corner, out at 45 degrees. Now another tip you can do, if you've got a fresh blade, you go in there, and then if I just hold that, the tension on it, like so, bring that round like that, just keep the tension on it. There you go. And I'll have that off of there. So cutting the leading edge, I am going to hold it like so. I've got my knife nice and sharp. I'm going it in an angle like that. I'm just going to work my way across there. So in fact, basically, it's like the, the blade and the handle is giving me the correct thickness. So I'm going to just carry on now. Uh, I'm just going to roll these edges over, make sure they're all secure. When I've done that, um, I will come back to you because I'm going to then tack the ribs. Only just tack the ribs. We're not doing any shrinking. And I want to talk about how we're going to finish this off. A nice way of finishing this off. Okay, I've tacked round. Um, I don't need to do any important sheeting at the at shrinking at the moment. But just talking about this covering these bits of balsa with sheeting bits what I found is is I've just put a little bit of tissue on mine and then um, slowly worked it over you might find you have to go up a little bit on temperature but at the moment I'm just tacking this down I'm not uh, this is not the, the final shrink down this is just to make things a lot easier now one little tip when you're heating up mass areas like that little tip here is is just roll it over put it down on the bench and just hold it down for 30 seconds just to let everything cool because what you don't want to do is you don't want to start so this is I mean you can hear this already and I've not I've not I've not even attached any of the ribs or anything else so at the moment all I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the interstitial ribs and what I plan to do is very quickly I'm just going to tack the main ribs like so uh, because I want to get the top covering on because I think if we overdo this we're going to end up with a warp so I have just I'm just tacking these like so not going mad, keeping the iron running very quickly and uh, just going over there like so I'm now just going to leave all of this we're now going to do, so the top is exactly the same uh, remember that you do it in reverse so when you've got your material you'll have your matte material shining up that's going to be the bit that matches so don't cut around like that because that will be wrong um, now let me just tell you something here that I've just noticed that I think it's worth reviewing. You can see in this light. Can you see at the moment that this has got like a matte finish to it? So that's shiny, that's matte. I can tell you now what that is, that's actually the adhesive, the heat, hasn't started to shrink there. So, I think I mentioned this when I was doing the pug too. If when you get to about here and you think to yourself, oh blimey I've got condensation, it's not, it'll be that you haven't actually activated the, uh, well, my theory is, it's the adhesive hasn't been activated. So you'll find that when we go over all of this, this has obviously not seen any heat. You can see either side of the rib where the heat has been, but either side of that, it's still that matte finish. So just a little top tip there, 
um, it's not condensation it's actually the adhesive of the covering so I'm going to do exactly the same now what I will do is the only thing you're going to see different is is I will just roll the edge of the top surface to about here all the way along and tack it all the way down so it's actually feather cover on feather cover because that then rolls over and that's going to protect the material and I'm going to do exactly the same and I might even in this it's a high stress area I might even roll the not finish the feather covering on here I might come all the way to this edge to finish the feather cover from the top surface because remember that this is actually helping to form part of the structure Okay, so I've done both sides, just tacked all the way around. Now all I'm going to do is, I'm just, I've wicked up the temperature just a little bit. Because obviously it's got to penetrate through the tissue. And I'm just using that there. What I will do is, I do find myself doing this now and then going back. So, I've got this now basically tacked down and then let me just finish this one here and then we'll talk about the ribs so I've got this basically tacked down like so and the same thing I'm going to do now is I am just going to tack all the main ribs like so can actually see that beautiful black beginning to show through now and there we go and you notice if I'm taking a little bit of time on this now we're going down for the more shrinking is so I'm just going to you see it beginning to shrink so what we're doing now is I've done all the main ribs top and bottom and then what we're going to do now is I'm just going to do all of these ribs up to this first rib here I'm going to shrink these all down I'm going to shrink them all down stop flip it over just hold it down just slowly work my way so the bottom to tops, the bottom to tops, the whole way out. Just being methodical in how we actually add the heat to the structure. Because you can see at the moment, she's absolutely fine. And uh, I want to stay that way. Warp. Okay, so I have, I did these ribs to here, flipped it over, then did these ribs to here, flipped it over, did the same. So you get the idea slowly in a controlled way adding the heat now um, it's looking pretty tasty but it's still got some wrinkles in it so now what we're now going to do is uh, and you can see actually if you look at this piece here this is all shiny and if you look at these panels here they're slightly matte so now all I'm going to now do is very gently keep moving um, adding some heat I'm going to do two panels like so there we go like that just hold it there just for 30 seconds or not even that oh that's looking tasty isn't it so then I'm going to flip that over like so and you can see these two here look and I'm just going to slowly keep the old line moving these two panels and I can actually just gently like so and then going to flip that over and then we've just got just a little bit here to do a bit more on here
you will find so you will find that you're gonna have to go back see look that little bit's just appeared but I think it's better to actually just go along the whole wing and then you can just slowly go back and uh, oh it's looking well tasty Right, there we go, one half of an SOAS wing in a bag wing now covered. Now, as I've said, you might find, leave it to rest overnight, you might come back and think, oh, a little bit of wrinkle, a little bit of wrinkle there, that's perfectly fine, because the structure needs to settle, but I'm well happy with that. Um, one little tip here, make sure that you have uh, use plenty of heat shrink round here, well sorry, plenty of heat round there, make sure it's adhesive because obviously we're going to be cutting that out and you don't want that peeling off. Okay, so the covering has gone very well, very pleased with that and um, so the next step is going to be I'm going to join the elevons, remembering that we are bottom hinging and we've just got to install the servos and obviously then the push rods to go. So, first thing I would do is make sure that the push rods holes here are absolutely clear and easy to do because that's going to make it easier. Um, I am going to install my servos first, purely because I'm going to have to turn this upside down and obviously we don't want this horn in the way. So I'm going to install my servos, remembering to centre them first. I'm going to install my servos and then when I'm happy with my servos, um, I'm then going to join the elevons. Now, I normally use the covering to actually uh, make it part of a, what I think people call it as a live hinge. This time, I'm going to use a tape that was recommended to me, which is like a greenhouse type tape. And uh, I'm going to use that for the simple reason um, I'd like to do some experimenting with this wing section a little bit later and this tape will give me the facility to be able to do that because I'm just looking at experimenting for a future project glider of my own. Anyway, servos, elevons and I'll talk you through it. So I'm going to do a review on this, one of these electric pen screwdrivers. Apps rechargeable, fantastic, and uh, it's definitely something to take out on the field with you. And I will be doing a little review on these. You can just use it as a normal screwdriver. I quite like it because uh, it's uh, got a bit of an arthritic thumb, and uh, I found they, this is brilliant. But I'm going to do a review on that anyway. Let me crack on with these, just putting the servos in the wings. So just remember that you've got your servo arms trimmed exactly how you want them, set up before you put them in the wing, because if there's any issue with them and they're out of significantly out of trim, it's going to be difficult to get hold of them once they're in. Okay, all I've done is I've added this, now this is actually a greenhouse tape you know the tape they use for the plastic greenhouses to sort of like seal the joints very very strong very very adhesive and the other thing is it's not damaged by UV now I have just added um, the tape right along the trailing edge and I have just gently rubbed my the end of my blade down there and I'll tell you what that ain't coming off so what I'm now going to gently do is I'm just going to drop that on there. I'm going to hang this over the end of the bench, like so. I'm and going then to very, very carefully drop my elevon in, remembering that we need the gap slightly to be able to get it to move up and down. Now, I'm just going to 
check that before yeah there you go so I've got that in I've got that on I can't believe I've actually done that live on a video which is nine times out of ten it normally goes incredibly wrong now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna gently rub this in and we have had a proper result I do think, and I've said this before in some of my um, foam builds, that actually massaging this tape, you know, just giving it a bit of a rub, means that you just do get the adhesive warm. Look at that. Beautiful, and that, that that's not going to delaminate off of there. And that for my future product. Yes, superb. Okay, there she is, finished. S-O-A-S from Angel Wing Designs. A um, couple of things which I did, which uh, we'll just talk through now. Um, I just bent up my rods and then I put a Z bend on the front and I've just used a single L shape across there with a little bit of a heat shrink and then wick shrunk it down and then cyanide it on. Um, the build weight has come out at about 193 grams if I remember rightly. Uh, a couple of other things I've done which are uh, just worth let me just show you here with my experience with the prototype. Um, my advice is I would just I've hot glued the battery in not massively but I've hot glued mine in. Uh, the reason being is I found that, you know, um, it starts moving about, you know, if you have a couple of heavy arrivals, and it's, you've got that weight moving about, it's gonna do some damage. So um, I actually found it better. Actually also, when I was actually rigging it together to have the battery firmly secured, um, I've made sure that the one that's got the instructions on what actual battery is, because uh, I can guarantee you six months down the road, I'm gonna forget what battery I've got in it. Um, so. All we need to do now is we are just waiting for um, some better weather um, and uh, one little tip on doing the COG um, if you have no experience of dealing with um, flying wings they are very very sensitive to getting the COG right now the COG on this one uh, is 140 millimeters from the leading edge down um, now, I wouldn't recommend using your fingers, you know, not being funny, there's about 20 mil there, I could be absolutely out, and that is critical on a flying wing. I would say even start at 135, um, I've got my free um, CG checker sponsored by IKEA, which I just gashed up, um, flattened off those points, when I obviously go through my covering. But yeah, just spend a little bit of time getting the CG right. I, I'll be honest with you, I have had to add um, about 10, 15 grams. But I want to go forward of the CG before we start. I suspect I might even add a little bit more, just prefer my preferred um, style of flying. Okay, so if you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. I promise you, um, I have a massive project coming up next on its way from Australia. So toodaroo and I'll see you very shortly.